all and good morning it is day five five of our lincoln highway road trip we are currently in mansfield ohio and while we're in here in mansfield there is something i did want to check out and one thing i love to do as i travel through these different cities across america is check out their local museums these are not necessarily museums that would that would attract tourists from from out of state normally but kind of local little museums because i find that when you when you visit these museums when you're in a different city and you check out their local museums you can usually find a few amazing things inside that you wouldn't otherwise get a chance to see and i've heard rumors that there's something amazing here inside the mansfield memorial museum so please follow me So we head up inside it's this interesting stained glass here. It says Mansfield Memorial Museum, Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Building. Also, just interesting American flag with different lights on it. But let's head in. It's a very cool interior here. The museum. You can see the stained glass up there little guy sitting in the corner now this is super cool here this is a monument to john chapman better known as johnny appleseed this is pioneered apple nursery in richland county so yeah johnny appleseed actually planted trees in this area spent a good time in this area the legendary johnny appleseed but this there's something even crazier here up above there's a chunk of wood and this piece of wood here was actually from one of the last apple trees that Johnny Appleseed actually planted the tree fell down I believe it was in the 1950s to a windstorm and uh, this was a piece that was preserved Wow so this is came this is a, a tree that actually sprouted from one of Johnny Appleseed's seeds that is that is amazing now here is the museum's prized exhibit. This is Electro the Robot. He debuted at the 1939 World's Fair in an exhibit by Westinghouse. He could walk, he could talk, he could eat, and he could actually smoke cigarettes as well. And this is, this is the actual real Electro from the 1939 World Fair. He is all intact here. There is a model here. This uh, brass one is a model. This is meant to be what he actually looked like at the World Fair when he debuted. It says that he was later, they did some modifications on him and changed him. So he looks like that. He originally had a dog, Sparko, but the dog was apparently scrapped and they were able to, uh, to preserve him and take care of him at this museum. Apparently they have had offers from other museums trying to get Electro, but Electro is going to stay here at the uh, Mansfield Memorial Museum. This is his permanent home here in Mansfield. And just what an amazing piece of history right there to be able to see Electro. Now we did see a model of Electro when we went to the Heinz Museum in Pittsburgh, but yeah, this is the one and only, one and only Electro right here. Oh, you can, he moves? Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. And that is the original 1939 motor. Oh, wow. Down here we have something really cool. We have the uh, Electro's cookies. These are cookies that Electro would consume. These are, yep, robot, <laughs> robot cookies. You can see they have little sparkles on them, but they're cookies that could be eaten by a robot. Robot cookies, whoever knew there was such a wonderful thing in the world. See, there's a wooden mold 
for uh, Electro's hand and fingers there. And there is the interior of Electro. You can see he has bellows in his mouth to help him smoke cigarettes and all these moving parts. A real life robot from the 1930s. Now and here are the remaining pieces of the original uh, Westinghouse robot that was made in the 1920s. This is the predecessor to Electro. His name was Herbert and that is actually what Herbert looked like here because he was more flat than Electro. You can definitely see the evolution from Herbert to Electro. It's a wonderful case of old school taxidermy here. The peacock up there above looked to have an emu there and um, a big alligator skull, some snakes and lizard, some little ground squirrels there, some minerals as well. I love this way this is displayed much like a old Victorian museum. There's a hairball from the stomach of a cow. Another hairball there. And look at this baby armadillo that is so tiny. There, a lizard. I can't get over that armadillo. Various wonderful birds. There's a squirrel back there as well. Oh, and look at this. This wall of hummingbirds right here. It cost $140 to purchase, which is a lot of money mm -hmm. in 1953. But if you paid $35 more, uh, then you got this. And what's playing is this music box in the bottom, and it was $35 more. And it took up until about LG about what, nine years ago or so to put a computer chip in that actually now most dryers play songs. Yeah. Where they didn't before. So this would be one of the first dryers that played a song? Yep, this is the first song? one that played a song. Wow. Mm -hmm. So look at this up here on the second floor. There's almost an entire preserved Victorian museum. This museum has been here in this building since the Victorian era. And it says that the curator of the museum, the original museum in the 1800s, that actually worked for the Field Museum, the Carnegie Museum, and the Smithsonian, helping collect items. So wow, yeah, it's like having an entire Preserve Victorian Museum. It's these old Victorian style museum cases up here. And check out this a little Victorian taxidermy scene. This is from 1877. You can see the rooster there next to the duck at the table. Some more ducks over there. That is pretty amazing. Now I've seen this before at uh, Mr. Ed's Elephant Museum. It's a elephant hair dryer. I guess you would put that on your head, put the tube on the elephant's nose and let him dry your hair. And look at this, a, electric, a cordless electric toothbrush shaped like a rocket. It's an old military statue here for Mansfield. I think that might be I had to guess it, so that's Ulysses S. Grant. And like old Victorian museums, there's a lot of different artifacts in like a small space. You can see the old dresses here. And some Native American exhibits here. It's like a fish in that box. Is that like a big old tarpon right there? Yeah, a little shark. There's some shark eggs, some dried out shark eggs. That's yeah, a very crazy looking fish there. Is that like a okay, it's like a lion head rug there? Some African 
artifacts, little monkey there. Another little scary monkey above the case. Is that a gray parrot right there? And then we have a little coconut, little coconut head. The monkey in there. Oh, on this box here, amazing examples of Victorian taxidermy. It's interesting here, you can see this water bird here. And he sits in a little box that shows the underwater. You can see his feet. You can see a puffer fish right there. You can see this tiger jaw here. It says this tiger was actually owned by P.T. Barnum. This was someone's pet parrot there. And uh, we have a possum, a wheelbarrow with a dead bird in it. It's pretty interesting. Oh, and look at this dapper badger right here. This is Dr. J. W. Craig, and it is a lobster, a lobster person. You can see the head there is actually a lobster claw. A whole orchestra of little taxidermy animals. You got a rat playing the mouth harp. There's a frog playing the piano there. A squirrel here is holding up the uh, music notes for that muskrat. See the rats. <laughs> rats right there. A little, little rat there on the, trying to play a full size harmonica. See the muskrat there banging, banging on his drum. Here is a duck wedding. See the duck preacher there marrying these two young ducks in love. <laughs> That's pretty great. See a gray squirrel there, sawing wood. And a little rat miner, got his little mining equipment, going off for a hard day of work. Down here we got some buffalo bones as well. It has some birds here. Look at that little owl. A collection of arrowheads and Native American tools. Hold some taxidermy in there, got an otter. Oh, look at that fox. Chaos reigns. Got a little porcupine. Oh, look at that wild cat. Look at him. He is very wild. We have a bald eagle there. You don't see taxidermy bald eagles everywhere. It's next to the golden eagle here. Interesting fact, bald eagles, when you see them on TV, they actually use the call from a golden eagle because the bald eagles, their uh, noise they make is actually a squeaky noise. But the golden eagle actually makes the more majestic eagle scream that we're familiar with. See some swans up there. Some military uniforms. Some Civil War items in here including these little sharpshooter glasses. I've not seen those before. I guess they're tinted to make it easier to uh, shoot a gun well. Some Civil War photographs. Some clippings, clippings of hair. And this is this bullet was actually pulled out of someone's leg. That is a massive raccoon. I don't know that I've seen a raccoon that size. And we got a turkey over here. I'm not sure. What kind of skeleton that is? Is that a is that a dog skeleton of some sort? And here we got this collection of model planes. All these different military planes here. And then this room. Completely full of tanks. And here we have an exhibit on these Westinghouse products, these old crock pots, various cooking machines. And here is a World War I statue that's been moved to the museum. So wow, this actually goes to show 
why you want to stop into these small museums. Now I knew about, I knew about Electro. I definitely wanted to see Electro, but this museum is incredible. It's literally there was a museum, the Victorian Museum, in this building in Victorian times, and it's still here. They, it's just still here, and it's been lovingly cared for. It is, it is, it is in great shape. This is a, this museum is an absolute labor of, labor of love. So uh, if you're in Mansfield, come out. I think they're only open on Saturdays and Sundays. That's why I had not been able to make it out here previously. But if you're in Mansfield, if you're in the Mansfield area, definitely come by. Stop by here. Tell them the carpetbagger sent you. They, uh, it's a free museum. They run on donations. Make sure you drop a little money into the jug. But I could not recommend the Mansfield Memorial Museum. I could not recommend it anymore. You can see the Lincoln Highway logo on this bridge here. All right, we've stopped off in Lima, Ohio to get a little bit of lunch. So I figured we'd stop and get a bite to eat here at QB. There is, believe it or not, there is a QP Hamburgers, QP Hamburger chain here in Lima, Ohio. A hamburger chain based on the strange little naked elf that was apparently super popular at some point in history. Let's get us a QP burger. The drive through appears to be very popular. There's cars wrapped completely around the building. You can see the QP there on the sign. Um, I've come across QPs quite often in my journeys for some reason, and I still don't understand exactly what they are. Over here, they have an actual QP you can pose with. He's got, he's got a velvet rope to uh, keep people from climbing all over, all, all over them. Um, See, so it's got little wings there, a naked creature, a naked creature that uh, advertises hamburgers. There's a QP hotel sign, apparently QP, that, that QP themed hotels it says clean, sweet, pretty, and plump. I guess this is their mask, their, 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 their motto here. Hamburger pickle on top, makes your heart go flippity flop. Wait a minute, is, if your heart goes flippity flop, does that mean it gives you a heart attack? <laughs> oh my gosh, everything about this is very, very strange. And here is my lunch. I got, the, I got a, a, a cheeseburger there. There wasn't a lot on the menu. There's just cheeseburger, hamburgers, and like a few other, I think there was a fish sandwich and a, and a grilled cheese sandwich. So I got the cheeseburger there, some QP fries, got an orange soda. Look at that, hamburger, pickle on top, makes your heart go flippity flop. Oh, that's, that's so funny, that is so funny. Oh wait, Hamburg, you spell, this is one of the rare places it's that, that, that says Hamburg instead of Hamburgers. Now I got the QP burger with everything on it. Just went ahead and told them to put everything on it. A tomato, relish, pickle, onion. Then we have like a, oh it looks like it's like a square burger, like Wendy's. Let's give the QP burger a try. Mmm, mmm. It was really busy in here coming in. Now I see why. That is a good hamburger. It's definitely in the style of like a Wendy's burger, but very good. Is, you call that an old fashioned, old fashioned hamburger or hamburg, if you will. Mmm. Mmm. Definitely a good, definitely a good burger. And we have obtained. Clean QP Club. And here in downtown Lima, there's actually a second QP hamburger location. This building is really cool. And look at this. There's a QP 
perched on top of the building overlooking the city of Lima, Ohio. And look at this. This is this is very busy. This is the drive through here. People are backed up onto the street here to get their Cupy burger. And next to the Cupy burger, there's a very interesting mural here on the side of the jewelry store. There's all these people and they have names underneath them. I guess these are just local citizens, local people who they've emblazoned on the uh, mural here. Let's see, uh, it's like some historical figures mixed in with some more modern figures. This guy, Jesse Lowe, holding a sign that says, Drugs bring death. If you look over there in the tree line, you can see that there is a Harrison Mays cross over there in the field. Now, I've, I've documented these before. There was a traveling preacher by the name of Harrison Mays who put these crosses up all over the country. It's uh, pretty rare to find them still out in the wild. Looks like this one is a, a metal sign. Most of the ones we put up were made of cement. But uh, yeah, like a metal Harrison Mays cross here out in Convoy, Ohio. And here as we prepare to exit the great state of Ohio, we say goodbye to this giant fiberglass, Uncle Sam. And now we enter the great state of Indiana, the crossroads of America. Come here to downtown Fort Wayne, Indiana, and look who is immortalized here in statue form. We have Johnny Appleseed. You see Johnny there. He's not wearing his his uh, pot on his head. A lot of times he's portrayed as wearing a pan or pot on his head. He's got more of a normal hat there, but he does have his trademark apple. You can see his ragged clothing from traveling the land and uh, planting apples. His uh, bag of seeds right there hanging off his leg. And if you look right there, you can see he keeps his Bible right there. The name of the statue is Making Children Smile. It says John Chapman, better known as Johnny Appleseed, called Fort Wayne home from 1830s until his death in 1845. Love, not material things, drove Johnny's belief in actions. Making children smile was the most satisfying part of his day. While he traveled around the country planting apple seeds most of his life, it is believed that Johnny Appleseed did settle down in this area in the later years. He's one of like the original environmentalists, traveled around the country, taught people how to plant apples, apple trees. Of course, uh, one interesting thing is the apples that he planted actually were not eating apples. They were apples used to make whiskey. But over here, right next to where they have the Johnny Appleseed statue, they have a minor league baseball stadium. And look at this. Their team is called the Fort Wayne Tin Caps. It is an apple wearing a tin cap. As I mentioned earlier, Johnny Appleseed often betrayed wearing a pan or pot on his head. You can see their mascot there. And I'm, I'm starting to have quite an affinity for uh, minor league uh, baseball teams and their uh, mascots. In fact, I just love uh, love sports mascots. And I think the... the uh, minor league teams, they really are able to use their creativity when making these characters. So I absolutely love this. Based on Johnny Appleseed, almost as if Johnny Appleseed were himself an apple. That's amazing, I love it. On top of the bread factory here, we have this amazing sign. 
You can just see those endless slices of bread flopping out of that bag and onto that plate. Now earlier at the Mansfield Memorial Museum, we saw a monument to Johnny Appleseed and then in downtown Fort Wayne here, they have a statue of Johnny Appleseed as well. But before we leave Fort Wayne, we should definitely stop here at Johnny Appleseed's gravesite. You can see under the shade of these apple trees, you see a little grave over here. And here lies Johnny Appleseed. It says Johnny Appleseed, John Chapman, he lived for others. There's an apple on the top of the stone and a Bible at the bottom. They have erected this fence here around the grave. It died 1845. It says this monument here was erected by the Indiana Horticultural Society. So Johnny Appleseed, a horticulturist himself, and would later be honored by future generations of horticulturists. Entering Churubusco, Indiana, known as Turtle Town, USA. Unfortunately, we're just a little too early to attend Turtle Days. We'll drive in here, the Magic Wand Magic Burgers. Let's see, they have a little fairy on the sign, tapping a cheeseburger with her magic wand. Very bright mural here welcoming us to Churubusco. Dang, I really wish we were here a couple weeks later. We could have gone to Turtle Days. You can see the Lincoln Highway logo on the mural there. So we look at downtown Churubusco here we can see a Lincoln Highway map where we currently are. Started out here in New York, kind of traveled through Pennsylvania, Ohio, finally to Churubusco, Indiana. Still got quite a ways to go, as you can see there. You see the mural here, it says 1949 Turtle Hunt. And this is how uh, Churubusco got the name of Turtle Town, USA, there's actually sightings of a cryptid known as the Beast of Busco, or simply Oscar. People claim that in the local swamp that there was a snapping turtle the size of a car, and uh, people in the town searched high and low for it. They actually drained the swamp, but still never found the Beast of Busco. And look at that vicious beast there. And here is. Churubusco's homage to its cryptid, its monster, the Beast of Busco, also known as Oscar. It's a friendly little turtle statue. Of course, the real Beast of Busco would have been a giant snapping turtle and much more terrifying, but he is uh, just a nice friendly turtle here. So thank you for joining me here today as we travel the Lincoln Highway. We are currently in the Midwest traveling west through the west until we reach the west coast thank you guys so much for for your comments your encouragement uh keep filling up that comment section with locations you'd like to see me film along the lincoln highway as i travel westward we uh we still we're gonna be moving from currently in indiana gonna be moving into iowa then nebraska then um Wyoming, Utah, Nevada, California. Oh my gosh, it all sounds so far, so far would I put it like that. But uh, thank you, I will continue uploading new videos every day while I'm on the Lincoln Highway. Uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, consider donating to Patreon, $3 or more. We'll get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop, we got the the Possum Bagger pin currently, as well as four other designs. All that information is in the description of this video. And all that goes to help keep this train on the track, this boat on the water, and this dirigible 
in the air. Until next time, my friends. Until tomorrow morning. This one's in the bag.